polymer is definitely here to stay. Love it or hate it. I guess you could just blame Glock, I suppose. Um, as far as AR-15s go, uh, the Smith & Wesson 1522, really, really good AR-15 rifle. 2.2 rimfire rifle, cheap-ish. Definitely cheap to feed with that 2.2 ammo. Why is it cheap? Because it's made of plastic, in a nutshell, okay? But there is another offering on the table here in the UK and it goes by the name of the Vulcan Arms made by Northwest Custom Parts. It is a polymer AR-15, safe to check, in an M4 style, styly, if that makes sense. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and this is a pretty cool gun. Why? Because it's, um, dare I say it, this will just make loads of comments in the comments section. It is mil spec, okay? Before everyone gets on their iOS, well, that's not mil spec, da 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 da. This is mil spec way more than what a Smith & Wesson is. In fact, a Smith & Wesson is not mil spec, okay? Mil spec, in a nutshell, is just down to size or sizing of the particular firearm, okay? A Smith & Wesson is oversized compared to mil spec. This thing is mil spec. It's thinner than a Smith & Wesson. Regular parts, military style parts, will fit on this. Um, and to prove it that it is totally different to a uh, 1522, the lower is actually a 223, okay? I'll find it for you there. 223 lower, or 556, okay? You won't fit a 556 223 lower on your Smith & Wesson, okay? And this has got a buffer tube as well. So just saying, just saying. Anyway, Right then, let's throw out some specs about this thing because it is a real cool, cool new kid on the block, okay? So, 16 inch barrel, it's weighing in at 6.8 pounds, okay? These are selling, well, they're, they're on sale or when they start to go on sale because they are pretty new, so this is a bit of a scoop for you guys. Um, 645 pound, which is about 50 quid cheaper give or take, then the Smith & Wesson, okay? And if you like the M4 sort of style, then I think this might appeal to you. Now, the thing that may possibly turn you off a little bit, and I've got to tell you this and just get it out of the way, is there's no last shot hold open. It's only on the magazine, okay? With it being a 223 receiver, and it's running Black Dog magazines, by the way, there's no bolt hold open, it's just on the mag. So as you can see, the bolt is open on this. If I take the mag out, the bolt closes. That there, your bolt hold open, switch, control, whatever you want to call it, bolt release, it doesn't work, okay? So I just want to get that out of the way, you know, before people sort of, you know, moan at me in the comments, so. Anyway, that's that out of the way. So let's talk about this thing then. So, like I said, uh, mil spec is down to size. So this is, it's a lot thinner than um, a Smith & Wesson 22, okay? 1522, it's a lot thinner. Regular parts will fit on, on this. I know you can get regular AR parts that will fit on a, a 1522, okay? This is more, I don't know, how can, I, how can it get appeal to the sort of real AR guys? Oh God, I've started some, I know I've started something in the comments here. It's more, it's more AR than a 1522. Okay, I've just said it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be slaughtered by the, the 1522 guys in the comments. I just know I am, but, but anyway. <laughs> That's that out of the way, that's that out of the way. So, 
Let's take it from the top then, I'll tell you all about this thing. So first of all, it's running a Spikes Tactical adjustable uh, stock. Pretty damn good. It's, I think it's six uh, position adjustable, if I'm not mistaken. It might be less actually. Um, real cool. Uh, pretty comfortable as well. I mean, you know, polymer at the end of the day is warm. I mean, I mean most AR stocks are polymer now rather than sort of aluminium. So it's sort of warm on the cheek. Pretty minimalistic really. I mean, this, this whole um, AR is really minimalistic you know i mean check out the handguard there's it's it's typical typical sort of m4 handguard you know um minimal there's no sort of rail on there stuff that you don't need i mean i've got to say i am a fan of vertical grips if i'm honest you know i, I tend to sort of i like that feel or at least a magpul um you know a grip but I don't know, that, that's just me. It might be your preference. You might like loads of quad rail. Um, I like a bit, but I don't know. I, I, was, I was getting used to this, you know. I was, it's, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. But I just, I do like options, you know. Maybe you could put a bit of rail on there, you know, if you just wanted to run a, um, you know, a bipod or anything. But uh, anyway, back, back to it, so. Uh, yeah, so the the stock really nice, um, you know, spikes tactical. It's you know it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you've got a loop there, you know, if you want to sling this thing. So you know that might appeal to some guys. And then moving on to the actual receiver, obviously upper and lower, um, all polymer. And like I said, ugh, spinning it round, it is. Uh, 223 lower okay or 556 five, however you want to say it it is a real deal 223 556 five, lower okay you can't do that on a 1522 I think I've just told you that anyway um ambidextrous um safety catch okay typical AR you can swap that round to the other side um you've got like um handle on here you can take that off that'll reveal a load of picatinny rails so you can throw on a, throw on an optic um, so that is call cool option as far as accuracy goes <coughs> sort of just sort of jumping ahead here I didn't throw on an optic uh, I basically just ran it with open sight so I haven't really got a target to show you but I was shooting this thing at about I was shooting it at a six I think it was a six inch uh, steel gun, I'll throw in some footage. That was at about 60 or 70 yards and I was clanging it uh, um, most of the time, most of the time, yeah. But to be fair, I was using these open sights, you know, typical sort of M16 um, A-frame sight as well. Uh, that front sight, by the way, was completely covering um, my six, six inch gong. Uh, that I had out on the range, you know, so uh, I was kind of guessing where I was shooting, but I was clanging it, once I got my eye in, I was clanging it. So not, I haven't really done a major sort of accuracy test on this thing, hence, you know, I was using open sights. I didn't have an optic uh, sort of spare to throw on it to sort of really test it, but it is what it is, it's semi-auto uh, 22, you know. You want accuracy, get a like a CZ, bolt action or something okay but anyway back to the um to the receiver the upper and the lower everything um is pretty much the sort of standard what you see you know mag release um standard ar basically you've got forward uh, forward assist that kind of works but doesn't work because it's a two two so you ain't gonna work anyway um dust cover which is kind of nice uh, case deflector um, and this is the sticking point like I said earlier uh, the bolt release or the um, whatever you want to call it the last shot hold open um, it don't work that is my probably my only gripe about this thing that would have been really cool if that had worked you know that had just put the icing on the cake with this thing um, but like I said because it's 223 lower and a 22 upper 
it just can't be done. Um, like I said, the, the bolt holds open on the, on the magazine, which, uh, will it take its toll on the magazines? Uh, maybe. Black Dog magazines, by the way. Yeah, it might do. After time, it might sort of take its toll. Um, but pff, hey ho, you know, it's, it's one of them things. But what a reliable, reliable little rifle. Really reliable. That's, but we'll, we'll move on to that in a minute. So let's break this thing open and uh, I'll just uh, sort of show you the guts. Okay, so just bear with me. Remember, I, I always fail. Well, that went pretty well, actually. Breaking open the upper from the lower. This is where you'll see a bit of difference from a 1522, okay? Because you've got a real buffer spring in there, okay? That is kind of cool. When I was running this with sort of just standard ammo, uh, which was running sweet, you know, no problems at all, when I put in some, you know, CCI mini mags, bit, bit more pokier stuff, high velocity mini mags, you could actually hear that buffer spring working. And I thought, oh my God, this really sort of, you know, you sort of get the twangy sound um, and you, you feel the buffer spring sort of operating. And it's, I don't know, it just feels like a, a center fire a, AR when you're firing it. Obviously not the recoil, but just that doing, doing, doing every, every time you shoot it. That made me smile. I mean, yeah, all right, little things, but it did. It, I just thought, oh my God, it's like shooting a real, you know, a, a real, it's like shooting a centerfire uh, semi-auto. Um, so that's cool. And, you know, it's if you're into your ARs, that might possibly be a, a cool factor for you, okay? Uh, easy access to, to obviously get in there and clean. Single piece uh, bolt assembly. Get get back on camera. Um, just sort of drop drop in um, bolt. You know, dead easy to maintain. Just have a look down there. You see the barrel is probably absolutely filled. Oh no, I think I did run a ball snake through it actually. What I like about polymer as well, it's dead easy to clean. You know, you can literally put this thing in the sink and scrub it out. You know. Get the fairy liquid on it or what on that no that's probably not advisable but no um let's give, give you a closer look at the the bolt now this thing has had some work i put probably about 300 uh, rounds through it you know i've not cleaned this i've only like i said i only run a, a boar snake through it yeah i know i'm lazy i know but it was running sweet as a knot pretty much um it did choke on a couple of rounds, but I think that was just down to um, how, how sort of dirty it was getting, to be fair. Um, I say Wayne from Northwest Custom Parts, he was telling me that they ran this thing when they were testing it to literally oblivion. They were putting that many rounds through it that um, you couldn't even touch. You couldn't even touch that because um, it was just that hot, you know. Um, the barrel was red art. It was just they just got this thing cooking basically. Um, but yeah, that's your that's your one piece bolt. Typical sort of AR. Looks well made as well. They're really sort of chunky, quite heavy. Look at them, look at them welds on there. You know, no problem with sort of extraction or or anything like that. Didn't didn't really have any problems. Just just your usual sort of problem every now and again but it's it's a 2-2 two -two rim fire so you know you're gonna get it you'll you'll never get a one 100 reliable 2-2 two -two rim fire just ain't gonna happen so that is your upper and your lower now let's talk about the magazines now black dog magazines um 25 rounder this is and I think this is a 10 rounder, if I remember rightly. Eh? Yeah, 10 rounder, it's got it written on the side, duh. Um, yeah, real core cool magazines. Do I prefer these to 1522 style? Um, I don't know. I like the 1522s where you pull the follower down. You know, you can just drop them in. I do like that. 
but they have their drawbacks because crap can get in there. Whereas these, pretty much, pretty dead easy to load, you know, um, and they're pretty much, you know, dirt resistant, you know, no sort of crap can get in there. So it's one of them, um, mags and mags. You can, I believe you can load these up with um, those fast trigger reloaders, I forget what they're called now. Um, you know, you can do it with the 1522 ones, you can do it with the black dog, dog ones. With this being a black dog one, uh, I'm wondering if you can get the 50 round drum for it. You probably can, because black dog are pretty sort of famous for, for making those things. So there's a thought. Uh, I'll, I'll find out about that actually. I would imagine you can, um, but that'd be cool. In fact, I wish you'd got one of them just to give it a try. But um, yeah, so that's the magazines. Like I said, um, you know, the bolt won't sort of hold open without a mag in it. So that is a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. T-bar, cocking handle, typical AR. And then, like I said, you've got the D-handle here. You can take that off, you know, throw on um, an optic because you've got loads of pick rail there, as you can see underneath it. I just run it like this, you know, with opens, uh, just open irons, just classic, keeping it classic basically. And then, uh, well, let's talk about the sights while we're here. Just typical, typical sort of M16 sights, um, you know. <laughs> no comment, really. <laughs> no, they're, no, they're all right, they're all right, but I'd probably, probably throw on something a little bit better. You could throw on a red dot, you know, if you used to get one of these. Or if you just want to keep it classic, keep it classic, you know, whatever. And then you've got like a grey phosphate coloured um, barrel, quite a heavy barrel really, uh, bird, bird, bird cage um, suppressor on it, which is pretty cool, that was a bit loose actually, in fact let's take it off while we're, while we're uh, sort of having a look at it, I'll show you, the, show you the barrel, show you how thick the barrel is, so that's Pretty thick, pretty thick. So that's threaded as well. Uh, forget what the thread is, I'll throw in uh, an annotation, you'll see it in the screen now. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a cool, cool little rifle. Um, really enjoyed uh, using this thing. And I do, I just like the fact that it is, let's put this 10 rounder in. That's with the 10 rounder. That looks pretty cool like that. Um, I've really enjoyed it using this thing, you know, um, I like the fact that it's got the buffer spring in. I like the fact that it is slimmer than a 1522. It just, it feels totally different to a 1522, okay? I wish I had one here actually to sort of compare. Um, should have thought of that really, but I've not got one. Uh, and I've not got one to hand, so hey ho. But just a cool, cool little rifle. Um, I'm not going to touch on the mill spec thing. We've already mentioned that. But it's just a, a nice little little rifle. You know, if if you want the classic M4 look, you know, I think you're going to really like this. Um, you've got, by the way, didn't mention it. Ugh, lifting it up again. Um, you've got like the uh, A2 style pistol grip which is obviously swappable, so you can swap that out. I mean, the good thing about AI is you can really sort of pimp them up to however you want, you know, you could change the change the stock. Not that award, you know, Spikes Tactical, pretty damn cool. Um, yeah, I'd probably change the pistol grip if that was me, you know, get something a bit nicer on there, but it's good enough, it's good enough. Um, I have the, I've just noticed the pins drifting out here, trigger pins, drifting out. I did notice that actually, um, after firing quite a few few uh, shots, it did start to drift out, unless it's just the way I'm storing it in the bag, I don't know, but hey ho. Um, the only other gripe I'd say about this uh, rifle is the trigger pull. It's a little on the heavy side. Now, let's just give it a pull, just for, oh, I've got a mag in. Let's just give it a pull just for 
just for a laugh, but I'm I'm gonna guess at like um, I don't know two tons something like that. It, it is a heavy trigger pull, guys. It really is. Ugh. Seven pounds ten, nearly eight pound trigger pull. Whoa! Time to get to the gym. No, not really. Yeah, it's a heavy trigger pull, but <coughs> excuse me. Um, <laughs> It is what it is, you know, ARs like this, you know, tend to have heavy trigger pull. You know, all the all the classics did years ago, sort of uh, before the uh, the semi-auto ban in the UK, you know, uh, those of you that may have had uh, ARs back then or probably, probably re reminisce of the heavy uh, triggers that they had, but can you swap, swap the trigger out in this one? Yeah, of course you can, it's AR. You know why wouldn't you? So that's probably worth worth doing. You know, I mean, I think if it was me, I'd change the trigger and probably the pistol grip, and that is about it. I'd leave leave it as it is. But um, pretty cool, pretty cool rifle. Polymer. <sighs> do you like polymer or do you prefer aluminium? I'm liking the polymer. I really am. You know. It's just as strong as aluminium. Um, it's corrosion free. Yeah, I know. Aluminium is, you know. The, all right, the only thing you can probably tell the difference is if you look real closely, is the molding marks. Can you just see one there? That's probably the only way you'll sort of tell it apart. And obviously, it's warmer than, you know, aluminium. But. Hey ho, hey ho. Trigger, like I said, it is, you know, like I just showed you, it is heavy. Um, it is a metal trigger. Just a standard sort of M16, M4 trigger. You know, well, the actual trigger blade itself is. Um, so yeah, just a, just a cool little rifle. Definitely worth a lot. You know, if, if you've got a 15-22, um, I think one of these would go alongside it very nicely. Uh, if you if you're after something like this, it's definitely worth looking at uh, the Vulcan Arms, the Northwest Custom Parts Vulcan Arms 22 Polymer. Uh, definitely worth a look. At the end of the day, guys, I think I'd say it's down to personal preference. You know, it's. You want that M4 look, um, classic M4 look, and it's a bit more mil spec than a 1522. Then here it is, here it is. Anyway, guys, that is it. That is a quick look at the Vulcan Arms Polymer 22 by Northwest Custom Parts. Definitely, definitely worth a look at this thing because it is, it is cool. It really is cool. It was making me smile anyway. Anyway, guys, that is it. That is Rack and Load. Thanks for watching. See ya.